Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank me you. again, Lord. We're standing in the need of a prayer, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Back before your throne again, Lord. I thank you right now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just feel an urgency. God just was speaking to this morning. There's an urgency. It's an urgency. The alarm is the alarm is ringing right now in this uh, atmosphere. There's an emergency. And God said, you know what? They challenged me. They challenged me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, I humble myself up before your holy yes. God, throne. Holy Ghost, you speak. I have nothing to say. Sanctify us, Lord, in your truth, Lord. Say your word to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God says, uh, uh, the, you know, the alarm is sounding. The alarm is sounding. He say, look around the atmosphere. He say, you know what? You know, it's an end-season word right now. Look, uh, look through the atmosphere. He said, they challenged me. They challenged me. He said, the Democratic Party, they came out. No, no, look, this is not a political message, no, no, but I'm going to use this as a statement to say, God, for this nation, the United States, you challenged me. Right. He said, this world challenged me. They say, no, no their spoken was battle for the soul of a nation. He said, it challenged me. He said, they were after my people. He said, my people that called by my name, he said, they were after my people. He said, my people fell for it. He said, they don't realize the, purchase, uh, the persecution of the saints during this time. He said, uh, they're going to close your church. You don't have freedom to worship anymore. The persecution has already started. But the Christians, their hearts are so hard, they cannot figure it out. They're hiding behind closed doors. See, but God got a message for those also don't lay on down. See, but God said, they challenge me. But God said, America. How do you know how are your masks working now? How are your masks? They said the major pandemic outbreak going around everywhere. Everybody had a mask mandate, can't go in the store, everybody had masks. God said, America, how is your mask working now? Amen. Your mask cannot save you from the wrath of God. You can run behind that rock and that rock and say, You cannot hide here. You cannot hide from the wrath of God. God said, America, how is your mask working for you now? Come on now, good job. Well, we got to say, uh, social distancing. We got to stay away six feet apart. God said, how's that working for you? Mm -hmm. There's a major outbreak going around. So we got to lock it down. Then they say right now it's going around every, uh, no, throughout the nation, throughout the world. So God said, yes, how do your social distancing work right now? God said, I told you how you social distancing yourself from the world. He said, come out from amongst them and be you separate. God said, I told you that. That's right. That's right. See what you got the church now. But God said, you know what? He said, I need you to just tell this world, tell the United States, you know, it's about a wedding you know, that's about to happen. He said, there's a wedding, I invited them to that wedding. He said, they refused me. He said, go and tell them what I tell about my wedding. Matthew 22 and verse 2. He said, the kingdom, Matthew 22 and verse 2, is where I'm starting. And I'm talking about, I'm going to talk about the wedding, and I'm going to talk about the engagement, and I'm going to talk about the after party. See, everybody, when they uh, do a wedding, they put most of their focus on the after party. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know they, they, they don't put too much focus, they spend the money for the after party. See, but I'm going to talk about the wedding. First, I'm going to talk about the engagement, the wedding, and then we're going to talk about the after party. Everybody that called the Lord, Lord from their mouth, they would not be at that after party. God got a party just for his saints and just for his children. He said, you know, I invited them, but they refused me. He said, everyone that said, Lord, Lord, from their mouth, their hearts are far from it. He said, don't expect to see them at the table that you are with you in the after party. God said, I got a party just for my people. He said, they're going to try to come in either kind of way. He said, but guess what? I got a guard at every gate. Going to guard every gate. You know what? They cannot enter into the new party that I have for my children coming on. If you don't believe the signs of the time, you look and I'm telling you like this. If your body take that seat, you start counting down. Because God said it in the book of Daniel. When the sign of prediction, you start looking at their policy, you start to count down. He said, know that I'm even at the door. I was God, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is soon to return. He said, the king of heaven is like, he said, the king of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. He said, the king of heaven is like a king who arranged a marriage for his son. And so he said, you know, son, he said, God said, the marriage I arranged for my son, Jesus Christ. People don't got so, you know, people don't got so high-minded. People got so, uh, their hearts don't went cold. He said, they denied me all kind of ways now. He said, they don't want to speak my name Jesus anymore. He said, their mind is somewhere else. And what God said, the book the, uh, said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. That's right. He said, now the Jewish custom. With a Jewish custom, when they, when they have a Jewish custom in the marriage, that, in, uh, you know, the Jewish 
dead. The son leaves his mother and father, he's gonna find himself a wife. Mm -hmm. Now he don't do it like the day he do it today. When he finds himself a wife and he go in, that's the engagement part. He finds himself a wife and they meet. And they become engaged, and their engagement is not by letter, or it's not not be about words. And their engagement, they get two glasses of wine, and they'll both drink from you know the glass of wine. When they finish drinking, the bride and the groom will put the glass down. The groom say, "That's the last drink I will take until we meet again in the father's house." So, the, so the groom go back to the father's house. No, they don't do like they do today in America, I mean, uh, in America and around the world. When they be engaged, the groom do not go and move in with the bride. You know, that's not the way they did it back then. You know, that's what God said that fornication. The groom go back to the father's house. He's not going back there and prepare for the wedding, going back to the father's house. And when the groom go back to the father's house, you got the, uh, you know, you got the bride, uh, uh, you got the bride and the bride's maids. They wait at the, you no, know, they wait at the bride's maid's father's house until the groom come back to get them. See, but when the bride and the bridesmaid, they must be fully dressed. She must have on her wedding garments. Bridesmaid must keep on their wedding garments at all times. They sleep in it, wake up with it, and they got to keep a candle burning. Because, well, because nine times out of ten during that time, uh, the groom came back at night, and they got to keep a candle burning. So when the groom went back to the father, the groom gets preparing a chupa. A chupa is like a tent, a, you know, like a canopy. A covering. Mm -hmm. He prepared that tuba, you know, so they could perform that wedding up on that canopy. You remember the canopy, the tuba that God had, you know, the, uh, you know, God had over the children of Israel back in the Old Testament when He covered them. I you know He covered them, and He had to lift it up because of their disobedience, and that was a uh, divorce. But God said, "You know, come back for a remarriage right now." God, God, put away, but God said, "Come back for my church." Yes. And so He go back and prepare them a tuba. A tuba is a tent, it's a canopy, and that's when they perform the wedding up under this tuba. And then when well, no while they uh, no, and you normally it take a whole year, take a whole year before you know, uh, you know, uh, you know before he go back and get the uh, bride. See, but one thing about the groom, when he's at the father's house, the groom cannot go back on his own. He had to wait until the father say, "Now you go back and get the bride." Uh -huh. And so the groom go all the way back to the bride's house, and when the groom, I mean, when the uh, uh, when the groom and the groom's men, the ones that with him. When they walk and they going back to the bride's house to get his bride, they uh, no one of the uh, one other uh, groomsmen started to blow a horn real loud, and the bride maid and the bride and the, the bride's maid and the bride they know that you know what the groomsmen in back they hit a horn, so she grabbed her candle and she run out to meet you know, the bride. He take his bride back to the father's house and they perform the wedding up under the canopy of the father. And that's how they become unity. And see what God trying to say right now, and see, when you right now, honor, when you remove yourself from the canopy, other words, the tuba, when you move yourself from the covering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there's no wedding. Some people say, Lord, Lord, from their mouth, but they say, I walk away from Jesus Christ. God said, there's no wedding. So, so in John 14, he said, let your heart not be troubled. Mm -hmm. He said, ye believe in God, also believe in me. That's Jesus Christ himself. Mm -hmm. You can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. He said, let your heart not be troubled. Ye believe in God, also believe in me. Mm -hmm. And he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If were not so, I would have not told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. And whether I, no, whether I go, you know, nor the way, no, you know. Amen. And Thomas said to the Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. Yes, that's right. I don't care what T.D.J. said. I don't care what Joe Osteen said. I don't care what the Hebrew Israelites over here talking about. I don't care what the Muslims over down there down there talking about. But I know what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. He said, I'm also the light. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's right. And Jesus said, they challenged me. He said, you can tell them all they want. You are not going to the after party unless you come through me first. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. 
No man can get to the Father unless you go through Jesus Christ. I don't care what Pope Francis is up there talking about. I don't care what President Obama and Joe Biden and the Democratic Party is talking about. I don't care what none of them talking about Buddhists. I don't care what these people talking about. I know the universe worship us. You know the witches around here. You know the African ancestors worship us. I don't care what they're talking about. I know our Lord, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. God says there's an enemy in the world right now. Enemy playing on people's minds right now. And telling them that, you know what? Jesus is not the way. Jesus is not the way to the Father. But God says, son, I need you to tell him right now. He said, it's about to be a time. But I'm about to, he said, when me and my groomsmen come back, when they sound their horn, he said, all the ones that with me, he said, the dad in Christ is going to rise first. He said, all my children left, we're going to rise up, we're going to meet again in this earth. He said, tell them, he said, tell them, son, if they want to be a part of that great revival, they're going to have to believe on me. Amen. This world, he said, United States, how's it working out for you? He said, they denied me. Amen. God said, how's it working out for you? Amen. And God said, looking at the church now, he said, church, what happened to the church? What happened to the church? God said, but the ones that's in me, he said, when I rise up, he caught up with me. He said, there's going to be two lying in the bed, and, you know, and then I, I know the one's going to look over, the other one's gone. There's going to be two flying in the field, and then there's going to be one out in the field. There's going to come a time when you're going to look for mother, you're going to look for father, sister, or brother, you're going to look for pastor, you're going to look for the congregation, and they won't be there. So God is going to say, I hear people say, no, I don't want the drama. I'm tired of hearing the drama with Donald Trump. But it's about to be some drama that's about to come on when God comes down and takes his children to do how to deal with that thing. God said, I got something coming for all of my believers. Yes. Say that locust got a stinger on it. He said, I'm going to punish every last one. They're going to go through. He said, on this earth, he said, you know what, they're going to have to. No, uh, no, they're going to have to call upon my name. Yeah. God said, going to be a great revival when I call him. He said, they're going to be forced. And God said, I'm a gentleman. He said, but they're going to be tortured so bad. Yeah. They're going to know that my God, you know, our God was real. Yeah. Yeah. It's a time coming. Yeah. Don't let nobody separate you from the love of God. Yeah. I love people and I talk to people, but I don't tell you like this. I love Hebrew Israelites. I love them, but you can call yourself Israel all you want. Because God, God Jesus Christ said, you know what? You don't serve Jesus Christ. He said, he is the one. Jesus Christ, I will take you off and grab somebody else in your spot. You don't have to accept Jesus Christ. No, you can't call yourself Israel if you don't believe in Jesus Christ. You know what you are? You get a black man. That's all you are. You can't call yourself Israel. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, he says, I will cut you off and I will grab that Mexican over there in your spot and believe in me. You can't call yourself that. These people around here, over here, yeah, we Israel. Yeah, you know, you know what you know what you are? You're a black man that's going around preaching, preaching hatred. That's all you are. You are not Israel. The Israel, the gates that God talked about in all our, our revelation, that ain't the gates that you're going through, bro. There's another gate that's gonna be wide open. You now everybody gonna see. It's gonna be that gate, not the gate that you're headed to, but not the gates that God talking about. He said, "I am the way. I am truth. I am the life." Amen. He said, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. Right. And for him, of course, you know him, and you have seen him. Jesus said, you're looking at me, you're looking at the father. Yes. Jesus said, if you know me, you know the father also. That's right. That's right. King, the King James Version, uh, John 15 and 15, he said, I am the true vine, mm -hmm. and my father is the husband. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And the father and the husband. Every branch in me that get, every branch in me that bears not fruit be taken away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it and bringeth forth more fruit. Jesus said, I am yes, the true one. Yes. And talk about the engagement. He said, Well, he, the marriage is like the kingdom of heaven. And the king arranged. No, no, a certain king will arrange a marriage for his son. And he sent out his servants to call those who were invited no, to the wedding, but they were not willing to come. Mm -hmm. Again, he sent forth servants, said, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat calf are killed, and all the things are ready. Come to the wedding. God said, Come back, come back. But they still say, No, but they made light no, of it, went their way. 
No one to his own farm or no to his own business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard of this, he was furious. I will God right now. There's a, there's a time coming in the book of Revelation. He said the angels going to stop worshiping. They're going to see the anger of our God. Heaven going to stop for 30 minutes of our God. He said the, 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 the fury that come from him. He said, but the king that heard about it, he was furious. And he sent forth his army, destroyed those murderers, and burned their cities. And he said to his servant, the wedding is ready already, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite them to the wedding. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all of whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But the king, but when the king had came in, look to see the guests, he saw a man who did not have on the wedding garments. Oh, yeah, he looked around. He saw what this booty is doing, baby. What this, I mean, yeah, what this, uh, what this atheist going up in my wedding? Mm -hmm. Scientology, don't you up in my wedding? Mm -hmm. Oh, you need real sort of life, but you don't believe in me, but you in my wedding? Mm -hmm. Have you ever, well, I know I don't know, you ever been around someone and they'll throw a party and some people just come and crash the party? That's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. You weren't invited, but you just came and crash my party. Mm -hmm. People think they can get in some other kind of way. I can do what I want to do, live how I want to live. I'm just going to crash the party. See what he said, you know what? He said, but, he said, but the king came in to see the guests, but God going to come in. He's going to do the inspecting, and God came in looking around. He thought he came in, someone just going to bring in. But they don't realize one thing about our God. You can dress in the attire. You, know, you can look like it, speak like it. You can go into all these classes and learn how to speak to poor people. You can do all that. But one thing about our God, when he come through and looking and inspecting, he said, hold on. This spirit is not like my spirit. How did you get out of here? I'm going to tell you, I know what happened last Sunday. And uh, me and uh, Evangelist Christopher, I thank God for that, brother. So we came down and broke bread on uh, Thursday. And it was something when I came down here by myself, and it was an uneasy feeling down here. And it's something down here, about, down here by myself, and I kept hearing, you know, I kept hearing this noise. What's this noise? And I said, well, you know, this old building, maybe something subtle. But nobody had been in this building for a few hours. So I sat there, and uh, if anybody that was watching, me and you know, Evangelist Christopher, during the first 15 minutes, you know that when I was speaking, I just stopped completely and I looked to my right. And I just gave it to Pastor Risk. I know I never told him about it. And when I was there, I heard a loud thump. Because God said, you got to pray sometimes these spirits come here, they'll drop spirits in your house. That's what Satan doing. Now Satan going around ministry to ministry. He trying to drop off his seed. And I know what God showed, I know what I heard. It came from the back of this church. A loud thump and then boom. And that's why I stopped and I looked. And I just say to myself, I rebuke you right there in the name of Jesus. Kept on doing it, you know, the will of God. The whole time I kept hearing noises, and I said, you know, kept on doing the will of God. So after me and Rich were finished, and we was leaving, we were locking up, and I was walking down the hall, and Rich was going down, I said, I locked the door, he was over there, going for me, I was trying to go down the stairs, and I was walking, and when I was walking, I heard a loud growl behind me, he just growled, mm -hmm. and I stopped, and I looked back, I said, the devil is alive. And so when I went downstairs, I said, when I went downstairs, I was a risk to lock this place up. So when I went downstairs and I feel still uneasy and uneasy. And I went downstairs and the Holy Spirit hit me in the car and I got to pray to rebuke this place because God said something that was dropped off in your building. He said, in this building, it don't have to be from this church, but we got different ministries all throughout this building. There's different spirits that run out throughout this building. See, that thing was coming. I heard the crowd. They had to tell them right now, you cannot stay in this building. You got to depart out this building right now because wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You cannot stay in the house that God has already built. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I said to myself, Lord, where did that come from? Lord, I wanted to show you something last week. Some people that come in, they don't come in with a heart to worship God. They come in the heart to start the soul discord. They come in the heart to come in just the soul, just the soul amongst the wheat. They come to plant their tares right amongst the wheat. Satan is gonna send them from house to house right now. We ain't seen nothing yet. Because of this other ministration getting in that white house, they coming for your building. They coming for you. 
Therefore, God wants us to be yoked up there in the word of God. We got to be encouraged right now in the word of God. Yes, Satan don't came in. People can't worship God like they used to. You know why? Something came in. Who be with you? Who be with you? Who be with you? God said, God sit high. He looked low. God said, my son, what happened to your worship? What, what happened to your worship? Oh, you too holy to endow right now. You too high-minded right now to worship me like you used to. What happened to your worship? God said, some came in and be with you. Some came in and told you that I'm not worthy of your worship. Some came in and told, or told you that you're more high-minded than I am right now. But God said, I am the true mind. God said, I am the way that you came to God. God said, I am. Yes, God said, what happened? What happened to his church? Jesus. And that's what God right now, he's doing a self-evaluation this year. God said, I need you to go and sit down and self-evaluate yourself. If you don't pray like you used to, what happened? If you don't worship me no more uh, like you used to, what happened? If you don't even want to fellowship with your brothers and sisters no more, what happened? You know, if all you can do is see bad in someone and you can't see the good in them, then what happened to you? God is calling his church, man. What happened to the church? You know, they say, you know what happened to the church? You start laughing to the church, look at this election that went on. God said this election went the way it did, but I just want to show you who was running these churches. These people don't have a heart for me. These people got a heart for this world right now. You're going to let man, uh, because I don't like Donald Trump, so I'm not going to vote for him, so I'm going to vote for the evil and all the perversion and the immorality that that party is pushing. And I know it go against God, but I just don't like him. The Bible says let nothing separate you from the love of God. How do you let man separate you from the love of God? Every time I'm telling you right now, people can say right now, you just you know accessory to every crime that's committed right now that God says abomination. Every time a child loses their life in your mother's womb, guess what? There's blood on your hand. If you sign on with them over there and they get into that office, and now that's blood on your hand. That's right. Every time. Man and a man go down and get married, woman and a woman get married, guess what? You're an abomination right along with them. Guess you know what? You signed on with them. Yes, and now some Christians make light of it. Oh no, nah, I just don't like the drum. But I'm telling you like this, it's gonna be some drama that you don't want to hear. Oh, and God, that, that, that drama, he said, guess what? It's a date that we all gonna have to make. And that date is called the judgment before God. You can change that appointment. There's gonna be an appointment that you cannot change. You can't go back and say, look, I got something to do that day. But God said, no, that day is appointed to you. But God said there'll be some drama when you look down and say, you'll part from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Get out and the word. God said, get out from face. Going around right now. See, so many people know it. They try to make it, not make it a mockery of God. Yes. And you go around signing on some things of immorality and saying that it's God that led you that way. So you make it a mockery of God. My Bible says, God says, I shall not be mocked. You can't mock God with your lying. You can't mock God over here. No, uh, no, you are. Uh, no, you perverted the word of God to make it fit the way you feel. God said, your feelings is not the truth. No, I know the gospel of Jesus Christ is the truth. And he says, sanctify us in that truth. Yes, Amen. Amen. Say, what? He said when the father, he said when the king come in, the king come in and he see the guest. He saw a man there that did not have on wedding garments. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in, uh, come in here without wedding garments? And, you know, and he was speechless. And the king said to the servant, bind him, hand and foot, take him away, cast him into out of darkness. There will be weeping and gashing of teeth for many a call. Well, he said, God, but I be so weeping and gashing up teeth. I'm telling you, God told me to come out from my mom's and my baby separate. God said, when I came out, he said, he said, when I came out with engagement. He said, an engagement, you know, it's just simply a formal agreement to get married. God said, you know what? I went to the cross. I prepared what he said, I'm coming back looking for my bride. Our church got a spot of rock, spot of wrinkle. God said, that's the part of the engagement right there. Uh -huh. It's a part of the engagement, just like the bride, I know, just like the, uh, the bride's maid, I know, and the bride. God, I know they must be prepared at all times. You uh -huh. must keep on that wedding garment. You must keep that light burning at all times. Uh -huh. You cannot put out the light. You cannot take off the garment. You got to be ready for the king when the king yeah. returns. Yeah. Say so we are members of the body, and of his flesh, and of his bone. For this call, shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall go and join a, a, a man now, 
that I ain't getting to the identity Christ that these people are talking about. Yeah. Like my wife said, my daughter was born, she didn't do a, a, what it called the ultrasound. that she was a girl on board. She knew when she had her, you know, November 15, 1982, mm -hmm. 80. She knew when she had her, it was a girl. That's right. I'm not even going to get on that part. So Joe like Wise, you go to Joe Wise, don't go with your theology. And all these people around here, yeah, you know, if that man said he's a woman, you got to dress him as a woman, the devil is a lot. The devil is a lot. It's just a piece of paper. Y'all can take that. I'm downtown legal. This, that, down. Oh, you, can, you can have that. But I'm going to be legal. I'm going to know my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I don't need your paper. I need a, I need a permission and authority for my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm not calling you no more. But I feel this fucking man in front of me. Yeah. 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 Yeah, double mind the man and slave all this way. He said, for that, he said, for this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother and shall join you. Remember that you know that? Father and mother. Then he say a man leave his father and father, a mother and mother. He said, a man leave his old no, the amount of family made up. Family made up with a mother and father and then the children. He said, for this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother and shall join unto his wife. His wife, you know, he had a husband and wife. Husband mean man. Uh -huh. That's right. Yes. Uh -huh. Wife means wife means woman. Uh -huh. yes. 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 So, 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 so he shall join unto his wife, and they shall and, no, and they too shall be one flesh. Yes. Yes. And he said, he said, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ, no, in the church. Why did God say this is a great mystery? God saying this evil time right now, people are confused. Mm -hmm. This time we walking in right now, people just can't get together. But you know, guess what? Because I, you know, I, you know, I used to always say you don't have to be a Christian to have common sense. But God spoke this morning. He said, yes, in order for you to have common sense, you're gonna have to give your mind to me. Because right now, people don't have no common sense. They're right now. They're right now. Christ Jesus. On, so yes, you have to be a Christian to even have common sense. On, That's why I sit around and people do y'all have common sense. Do you see the scandemic that going around the world right now? Yeah. 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 You had the rat boy. You had the rat boy called Fauci. I ain't gonna call him a doctor because he's not a doctor. He's a false prophet. He's a liar. And he's sent from Satan himself. That's the doctor for the world. He's not, he's not our doctor because I'm going to operate from the doctor Jesus. Yes. Yes. Fauci told him, how did he know that? 2017 will be a major pandemic upon the Trump administration going to shut the world down. They said they had a plan, but God already knew everyone worked for the wall. All year they've been telling you, they've been telling you, oh, y'all, boy, y'all got it going together. Y'all know the plan. Y'all know what's going to happen. Oh, the schools are going to open back up in November, uh, January. Everything will be good in January. All of a sudden, when they came out there and tried to steal this election because some crooked stuff went down. If you say the world don't like that man, why did you have to try to cheat that man then? If you say people approve of you, why did you go and try to have to cheat this man in order to win? Because that God let you know the majority of the people in the United States do not approve of that filth they trying to push upon this nation. Yeah. But, you know, they're going down there, looking at the stuff that's going on right now, but God said that's an engagement party. He said, man, go and find him, a bride. He said, a bride. He said, he said then the kingdom of heaven will be, the kingdom, uh, the, uh, the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins. Mm -hmm. No, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. But five of them was foolish. Yes, there's some foolish people walking around here just saying, Lord, Lord, but they're foolish right now. For the spirit of the Lord is there in his liberty. Do not go back to the church. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to tell you one thing about uh, uh, this pandemic. I mean, this pandemic. Come on, Pastor. COVID 19, know the difference between a protest and a worship. Come on. It won't show up at a protest, but on, somehow it's going to show up at worship. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go to the house to worship and go, COVID 19 will get you at church. COVID 19 will get you at church. Oh, go out there and protest. Tell them, build us now. What did Walmart have to do with anything in Philadelphia about our rights and all that black people? Why don't y'all tell people stories that I don't know the way they did? <laughs> but they go out there. Why don't you go out there and say, oh, probably, no, I'm protesting the police violence? But you know what? They stole, they stole every TV in Walmart. <laughs> they call it a protest. <laughs> And God, I'm looking at this stuff right there. And you're calling it a pandemic. 
But it's a, you know, if it's a pandemic, after common sense, he says the pandemic and something will be so vicious and they make this fire up, people dying thousands a day. What happened to the cancer patients? That's all, that's all I want to know. People died of heart disease, don't want to kill all black men and the black women in the United States. What happened to them? People don't die that no more. But one thing about COVID-19, right north and all that they'll make, they'll make rules. You can't go into that house to worship. Oh, when they come down for protest, yes, you will be out there without a mask, walk around because COVID-19 is the difference between a protest and a worship. So you go to a protest, oh, word, pro, uh, no, no, it ain't coming to the protest, but don't go to church, we'll be in church. And the church folks fell for that lie. That's what they are, church folks, they're not Christian. They fell for that lie. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up. But he said, he said, the five miles and five foolish. He said, well, uh, when the foolish you know, took their lambs, they took the oil with them. But the prudence, the wise, you no know, took oil and flats along with them, you know, with their lambs. Now, while the bridegroom was delayed, they also got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, behold the bridegroom, now come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish said to the uh, wise, give us some of your oil. For our lamp is going out. But the wise said, no, there will only be enough for us. Uh, no. He said, no, there will not be enough for us and you too. So go instead to the dealers and buy you some of your own. In other words, go to the ones you've been talking to. Go to the ones you've been hanging with. Go to the ones out there after the days of Noah. They were married, giving in marriage, drinking, and partying, everything. Go after, go back to the ones you were depending on then. Jesus, that's right. And while they were, you no, know, and while they were going away, you no, know, to make the pur uh, purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who was ready went with him, you no, know, to the wedding day, and the door was shut. Yes, it was. Many of the other virgins came, saying, "Lord, Lord." Open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. But God closed the door. You're going to be on the inside and you're going to be shut up on the outside. Five wives and the five foolish. When you stand girded up, what you're doing right now, and this right here is building up, and the Bible says, Evil, the chosen elect will scarcely make it in. What we do right now, we're going to scarcely make it into that door. He's going to be counting the doors about to close. We're going to barely squeeze in what I know about what we're doing now. So think about the ones right now that's half stepping, doing everything up under God. They look down, they use this as an excuse not to come back to church, and God talking about those right there. He said, I don't know you. He said, the invitation. He said, the Lord said unto the service. He said, go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. You know, and he said, uh, you no, know, in my house may be full. Mm -hmm. Revelation 22 and 17. And the spirit, and the spirit and the bride uh, say, come. And let he that uh, come, and let he that hears say, come. Okay. And let him that are thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. They saying, come. The bride and the bridegroom said, come. See, but it's true, no, but, it's, but it's for people that you're not going to find on the invitation list. Revelation 21 and 8, he said, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual moral, those who practice black magic, the auditors, the liars, they will not consign, I mean, they will be consigned to the fire lake of burning supper. This is the second death. He said a coward. I don't want to talk about the cowards. The Bible said a coward and cowards. They would not enter into that house. So you're a coward, you run that. And God's like, I'm giving you that spirit of fear. Yes. But power, love, and a sound mind. Because if you love your life, you'll lose your life. That's what he talked about, the cowards right there. He said, You so much running from COVID 19, but you stepped away from my revival. And so you so so concerned about living until you know, my day you are neglected the word of God. God's talking about them cowards right there who are afraid to go around people and say the policy that that Democratic Party is pushing is not of God. You know, you have to stand on what you believe. God's I'm talking about the bold one that will say that. But the cowardly will go around them, love is love. Mm. No, uh, they everybody do what they want to do. Everybody sin. No, that's their own sin. You can't judge yes, you can't judge nobody. That's the first thing they say. That's the first thing they say. You can't judge nobody. But my Bible told me, say, you know what, you know, uh, you know, go to your brother. That's right. You know, go to your brother. Matter of fact, you know, if you, know, if you see your brother slipping, go to him and let him know. 
that's called love. Yes. Yes. Oh, but you can't, yeah, that's the first thing they say, dude. You can't judge nobody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, throw this thing right here. Give me five minutes, I'm gonna wrap it up. This woman, you know, how can a man tell a woman what to do to her or do, uh, do to her own body? He can't tell us. Yeah, you're right. Uh, a man told you, though. A man called Jesus Christ. Yes. He said, he said present your body as a living uh, sacrifice. Yes. Or as something to God. Yes. He said, this is your reason. Because a man told you. A man, this man is called Jesus Christ. Yes. But you're so concerned about, oh, no, how can a man tell me not to kill this baby in my stomach? Because Jesus Christ said it, thou shalt not kill. How can a man tell what to do with our body? Because the man upstairs, you no, know, Jesus Christ himself, he told you what to do with your body. Yes. He said, the life that you live is not your own. But if you part of the world, Christ said, you know what? You can't judge them over there because they don't know. But some of them knew, but they fall away from the grace of God. For God said, I gave them up to the reprobated mind. That's right. Thank a you. man told you what to do with your body. Yes. And they're going around here now, so people have got so arrogant, man. Yeah. In the wedding garments. I'm gonna skip I'm gonna skip on down no, on that. He said the only way you can get into this gate. He said the only way you can get into this gate, he said you gotta be you holy, for I am holy. Yes, Lord. He said that's the only way you're gonna get up in here. He said, you know, who is this man? This man came in some other way. And John uh, uh, 10 and 1 said, Very, very, I say unto you, he that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbing up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Mm -hmm. And also in Jude 1 and 4, for the for there is a certain man that crept in on the no matter where, uh -huh. who were before an old ordained, no to this. Who were before all ordained you know, to this condemnation? Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into uh, you know, into lewdness and defying the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, "That's how they get in." He looked at it and said, "Why are you here? You don't get on the way to God." He said, "That evil man, you crept in on a well. They didn't see you, but the king came through and inspected the guests. How did you get in here?" You came in some other way. That's why right now it's dangerous for people right now to go around and you want to yoke on titles or you want to uh, uh, put on titles that God did not call you for. And so God look at that and say, you know what? Who called you to the apostle table? And God say, look at you were not invited to this table. Who called you over here? Who sent you this way? That's why you got people right now calling themselves chief apostles. And yes, you know, I was talking to Sister Ashley. Yes, you're right. And, you know, and Paul said, I am the least of the chiefest apostles. So how would you put yourself above Paul? How could you put yourself above Paul? He said the chief of the apostles was the twelve disciples, minus Judas, you know what? And you grabbed him Matthias. So how could you put yourself above them? Do you know right now? So you saying when you're a chief apostle, you saying that you're gonna be uh, uh, one of the twelve fountains on a new Jerusalem? You just saying that that's what you are. You saying that you're gonna be the one that's standing judge. Uh, no, 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 standing judge on no, Jerusalem itself. When you say that. You put damnation upon yourself. Paul said, I am the least of the chiefest apostle. That's right. The 12 founders of the New Jerusalem is made up of the, of the apostles, and Paul is not even one of them. Yeah, and so that you say that you're a chief apostle, so you already say that when the New Jerusalem comes down, I'm not going to be the one that's built down on me. The gates going to be built upon me. Devil is a liar, and people better come out, uh, come out from moms up right now, repent right now, get rid of that title to go back and not a job. No, I shall not be mocked. And then people are co-signing on. Woe to you that co-sign on them too. You go out there clapping with them. You go out there going to their ordination service, and you know that is not of God. God say, you know what? Do not wish them God speak for you too. You know it ain't right. And I don't talk about the wedding, and I'm done. I said five minutes, I think I got two. And the wedding, he said, the wedding ceremony will take place. Thank you, and he said, who is this wedding? He said, let us be glad. This is Revelation 19, he said, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is the, uh, uh, no, for the honor of the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife and his wife had made herself ready. You, and to her was granted. That she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, church without a spot or ring. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's what should be dressed in the saints, the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Right, blessed 
our day, which are called unto the marriage supper, nor the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the two. Revelation 21 and 1. He said, So I saw a new heaven, a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more. He said, I got to understand who is the bride. He said, The saints is dressing up the bride. The saints is the ones that are going to dress up in the bride and their purity and all their white. Who is the bride that Jesus Christ is talking about? He said, You're going to make up the bride. You're going to dress the bride. The bride will be dressed up in the whiteness and the purity of the saints built on the thousand of the of our 12 apostles, led by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which his name will change. God himself, he will be our king. You don't have to worry about no lamps and no candles and no new Jerusalem. He said, because the light of God will shine and there will never be no more darkness. You don't have to worry about that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God even told us, to go back and read Revelation. He said, my plants. He said, my plan will be medicine for you in the new Jerusalem. Yes, he said, well, there would be no sickness, so you don't have to worry about that. God just giving us a hint right there. He said, it's in my plants. He said, come out from them pharmaceuticals and nothing but witchcraft. Put that medicine now. Get back into my earth right now. God's trying to tell us something. Woo! Verse 7. Verse 7. Amen. Verse 7. Verse 7. He said, no, and, no. And I, John, so a holy city. A new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for our husband. So the new Jerusalem, that's God, that's God, our, our wife right there. And adorned in the saints. And so God was talking about the wedding that's soon to happen. But God said, go back and tell my children. Don't come in some other kind of way because I'm coming through. And I'm going to know, I'm going to check them out. How, who sent you? How did you get up in here? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. So guess what? No matter what the other people are trying to tell you, they would not be at the after party. The after party is at the new Jerusalem. He said, the new Jerusalem, that's when we're going to have the after party. He said, there'll be no more darkness. There'll be no more pain. No more sorrow. He said, I want to see a gladness throughout. He said, I'm going to prepare a place. And the place that he's preparing, he's going to prepare that new Jerusalem. He said, this whole earth is going to be passed away. He said, we're going to have an after party. He said, the after party. He said, there'll be some people that you know right now. You will not see them there. There'll be some people that you broke bread with last year. Last year. You won't see them there. He said, let the after party go tell my children. Turn from their wicked ways. He said, I'm soon to come back. Look for my church. God is trying to show us something. But America, how is everything working out for you now? God shall not be marked. Amen. Amen.